So you have a list of properties of definite integrals that you have on that front side. Let's practice using some of them. So here I have the integral from 4 to 1 of f of x dx. And I'm trying to figure out, of all of the information up here, is there anything that I can use to try to figure out the value of this integral? Well, I notice here. So what I want to do is try to turn this expression that I've been given into an expression that looks like this. So I know the difference here between these two integrals is that the limits are flipped. So most of the time, and we'll talk about why coming up really soon, most of the time the lower limit is going to be a smaller number. Um, but in this case, I've been asked to find this integral and the lower limit is the bigger number. Uh, up here we have the limits in the traditional order, in the typical order. So I'm going to say, I know I can switch the limits around if I also take the opposite in the integral. So this expression that I have been given is equal to the opposite of the same integral but with the limits reversed. So now I say to myself, well, everywhere I see the integral from 1 to 4 of f of x dx, that integral is equal to negative 2, so I'm going to replace this integral with negative 2 and get the answer that the opposite of opposite of negative 2 is, final answer, positive 2. Uh, so on the AP test, don't feel like you have to show that many steps or describe all that work. I'm just walking us through the reasoning since this is your first one. Um, this next one, can I find the integral from negative 1 to 4 of f of x? So just notice that anything related to h of x isn't going to help me. So what can I use from the facts that I've been given to... Try to find the integral from negative 1 to 4. So I see that I have an expression for the integral from negative 1 to 1 and the integral from 1 to 4. So if you think about that, the whole interval from negative 1 to 4, I could split up into two chunks. The part that goes from negative 1 to 1 and the part that goes from 1 to 4. So I'm going to take this integral that I've been given and I'm going to split it up into two pieces. Now I'm choosing to split it up at positive 1 because of these integrals I've been given. You could split it up anywhere you want. But here this is what helps me. So I'm going to rewrite that as the integral from negative 1 to positive 1 of f of x dx plus the integral from 1 to 4 of f of x dx. And now I'm going to make some replacements. I know that the integral from negative 1 to 1 of f of x dx is 5. And I know the integral from 1 to 4 of f of x dx is negative 2. So my final answer is going to be 5 plus negative 2, which makes... For problem C, I'm going to use um, that sum property, which says that if I have an integrand that's a sum, I can split that up into the sum of two separate integrals. So I'm going to essentially split that integral up right there. So I'm going to write this out. Don't feel like you have to write out every step, but I'm going to show how I'm going to rewrite that. That's going to be equal to the integral from negative 1 to 1 of 2f of x dx plus the integral from negative 1 to 1 of 3 h of x dx. And then the constant multiplier rule, there's no multiplication dot, but we know that's 2 times f of x and 3 times h of x. So I can take those constant multipliers and then bring them out into the front of the integral. So this is going to be equal to 2 times the integral from negative 1 to 1 of f of x dx plus 3 is the constant multiplier for this integral times the integral from negative 1 to 1 
of h of x dx. So now I can make these replacements. I know that the integral from negative 1 to 1 of f of x dx is 5. And I know that the integral from negative 1 to 1 of h of x is 7. So I'm going to have an answer that is 2 times 5. plus this 3 times 7. So 10 plus 21 to make 31, final answer. These last two problems are here to help us notice when the properties we know don't apply. So if I'm trying to figure out the integral from 0 to 1 of f of x dx, h of x integral isn't going to help me at all. That's about finding the area under the h function. Some other function is not going to help me figure out the area under the f function. Um, so you might try to use this integral that you know to give this answer. But the difference between the two integrals, right, is that the integral we've been given, we integrate to find the area in between negative 1 and 1. For letter D, we want the, in, the area in, in between 0 and 1. But we can't just chop the area in half because we chopped the interval length in half. We don't know that half of the area comes from the first half of the graph and the other half comes from the other. So we can't make an assumption here. We do not have enough information to answer that. Don't worry, on the AP test, they're not going to ask you to find an integral where you don't have enough information. There will be a way to find it. Well, this is just to kind of help us understand those properties a little more, see when they're not useful. Um, here, I cross out h of x, I can't read it anymore. There we go. So can I use what I know about the integral from negative 1 to 1 of h to answer something about the integral from negative 2 to 2? There are cases, like extreme cases, like tricky cases, where maybe I would know something about whether h is even or odd, or I would know something about the graph. If I've been given a graph, I can find it. If I've been given a formula for h, I'll be able to find it. But there's not enough information here to be able to answer the integral from negative 2 to 2 of h. So let me introduce you to a brand new kind of function you've never seen before. This is a function g of x, which is defined with an integral. And the input to the function, the x, is one of the limits on the integral. So most common error when we see this notation for the first time is to like, maybe I want to find g of something, so I have some input to the g function. Well, if this is a function g of x, then x is the input variable. And for example, let's write an expression for g of 1. So here's my g of x function. If I want to write g of 1, g of 1 equals the integral from 1 to, I'm replacing all the x's with 1's, so that's why I'm replacing that x. But notice this function here, f of t dt, there are no x's there. Don't try to replace any of those t's with 1, because we're only replacing the x's with 1. So now when I look at this integral, now I can answer this first question, now that I know how to write the expression g of 1. It says the integral from 1 to 1 of f of t. Well, whenever my lower limit and upper limit match, the area must be 0. So let's try g of 4. I'm going to try to write my expression. It's going to be a definite integral. So g of 4. Notice I'm labeling my work. This is g of 4. It's going to equal the integral from 1 to four, because I'm replacing all the x's with fours, of f of t dt. So can I find this integral? I can. This is going to be, let's see if I can draw it really neatly. So 
So it's going to be the area under the G function, in between the G function and the X axis, between 1 and 4. So I'm going to draw this in. I can split this area up in whatever way works for me. I heard some people talking in class and saying that that area might be a trapezoid. It's not a trapezoid. But um, this for the area in between 1 and 2 is a trapezoid. So I'm going to do whatever math I need to do to find these areas. And remember, areas that are above the x-axis, above the input axis, I'm going to think of as positive. Areas below, I'm going to think of as negative. So this is going to equal... Let's do this. I'm going to come here and I'm going to figure out this area that's going to be the average of the basis of that trapezoid. So 3 plus 1 over 2 multiplied by the distance across, which is 1. That's 4 over 2, which is 2. This triangle here is still above the input axis. So that's going to have an area of 1 half times base times height. The base is 1. The height is 1. It's one half. And then this little triangle down here has an area that is one half times base times height. But just notice that's underneath the x-axis. So I'm going to consider that area negative. So I'm going to write my final expression. I'm going to say g of 4 is going to equal the area of the trapezoid, which is 2, plus the area of the triangle that's above, which is 1 half, minus the area of the little triangle, which is 1 half. Final answer, 2. All right, and then one more we have. I want to find g of negative 2. Get my little up there. So I'm going to start by writing this expression. g of negative 2. It's going to be the integral from 1 to negative 2 of f of t dt. But notice I'm not going to be able to find these areas because finding those areas is for when the lower limit is smaller than the upper limit. So I'm going to have to start by making this change. So it's going to be the opposite of the integral from negative 2 to 1 of f of t. Dt. So let's see, from negative 2 to 1, that's going to be this triangle here. The area of that triangle is going to be 1 half. The base is, well, from negative 2 to 1 is 3. And the height is also 3. So that area is 9 halves. So my answer to g of negative 2 is going to be the opposite of 9 halves, so negative 9 halves, final answer.